Hello, everybody, and welcome back to All Walks of Light. This is Kim E. Hey, it's Chanel. We got her back, guys. I brought her back. <laughs> Finally. It's been, it's Finally. been crazy. Finally. <laughs> oh and I was like, time. yes, yes. And it's so funny because we had a guest tonight and the guest didn't make it. I said to Chanel, I was like, that doesn't mean that you get out of it. So come on, come yeah, on. Yes. <laughs> like, I had to snag her when I could get her. And you guys, tonight's podcast is going to be for those who have lost loved ones that they didn't get to say goodbye to people who are questioning mediumship and if it's real and all of that jazz. So talking about mediumship, we really want to get into when people pass and how mediumship pertains to, you know, can you talk to them on the other side? And we're both here to validate. Yes. Yes, you absolutely can. Um, so we're both going to give stories of people that we have lost on the, you know, and, signs that we have been given from them on the other side and then also um what happens like when they die like you have to understand that energy does not die guys like it you know they're always there and Chanel's gonna give us some great stories like always about you know people that she has talked to once they've passed on the other side and comfort that she's brought to so many of her clients so also believing guys if you don't believe <laughs> that, that any of this is real then they won't give you the signs you're not going to see the magic you won't and then you're going to continue to be a skeptic and that's that's totally okay with us we are not here to convince anybody of anything we're here to share our truth and things that have actually happened what you do with that information and how that resonates for you that's on you right my friend Trey who was my roommate in um LA had passed away and he decided to check out himself. Right. So there was a lot going on there. I didn't get to say goodbye. I was in Pittsburgh. He was in LA. I had sublet in my apartment. And since he has died, I have gotten so many signs. I mean, so many signs that he is with me, that he is near every time it's the an anniversary around his death. Um, something that I have lost will get found because I was always losing things and he had no patience for it. <laughs> I lose my keys and I'd be like, you're not going to help me find my keys. He'd be like, nope, because you're always losing your keys. So that was like, you know, validation. Like I knew if you ask for certain signs too, and Chanel could tell you like, ask for something specific because they will give you something specific. So I'll get into a specific story about him, but I'm going to pass over to Chanel so she can, you know, go add more on to like the other side. And I don't know if you want to go into the story first about your dad. Cause I mean, I got so many stories. Oh, my that... dad's like, it's like, he's still living. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, I can elaborate on some of the stuff that you said, and then definitely go into your story. Um, just with some of the experiences, one thing I definitely want to make sure to touch up on um, is people, my clients, when I meet them, whether it's a medical medium session, I'm working on the throat chakra or it's in a medium session. I'm helping them connect with a loved one if they weren't there to say goodbye, like maybe the person passed suddenly in an accident, um, a lot of people with COVID, like the people had to wait in the waiting room because mm. the person had to pass alone. Um, let me just tell you that is hitting so hard this year because it's been two years. I'm getting more people with um, who passed from COVID and um, or people who lost someone that passed to COVID and they didn't get to say goodbye. And I'm seeing trauma on the throat chakra because they have that goodbye suppressed in the throat and the heart. And yeah. it's kind of an thyroid illness and um, issues with their voice, sore throats and chronic um, sinus stuff and all sorts of things. Sorry, this is my dog. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm seeing a little bit of everything. So I want to let people know they 100% know that you said goodbye and it's almost like that feeling of like when you love somebody or you're connected and you think about them and then they call Kim and I do it all the time you're all on the radar time. <laughs> and you can feel it right and all you're the right. time yeah and I do it with my other really good friend um anybody that's close to me we can we all can feel it you know it's just one of those things it is take that vibe when you're thinking of someone you love and you want to reach out to them and they coincidentally reach out to you or like you feel like you're being watched from across the room and you look behind you and like your husband or your wife is looking at you. Take that feeling of just knowing, multiply it by like a million. And that's what the person who is passing feels like because when our time comes to pass, and this is one of those things you can choose to believe it or not, the person is surrounded by angels and ancestors from spirit realms. 
they do not pass along. They do not hurt. They don't suffer. Their body may hurt. They may physically feel pain and suffering. Spiritually, they are embraced and they are loved and they are carried over in light. Now, people that commit suicide or, you know, they're criminals, things like that. That's a different type of light. It's a different type of energy. They're vibing really low. Mm -hmm. So they cross differently. But when you truly have love for a family member and there's support there and whatever illness they have or whatever accident they've been in that took their life, they thought about you and they said goodbye to you before they left. It's just an absolute divine fact, but it happens so fast because in the spirit realm, there's no time. So when spirits or energies get stuck and they don't actually fully cross over, I mean, I've seen them in as long as 20 years. Like I've connected with people. They literally passed in the eighties. And I'm like, did they pass yeah. last year? I feel like they passed last year. And the person's like, uh, they passed when I was in high school. And I'm like, shit, they're 50. What? <laughs> like, yeah. What this? And the person literally is, they have not passed. They're over there just like stuck. But it's because like they took their life or they were a murderer or something like that. But even still, when they pass over, they have a choice. All these things transpire spiritually. So they get to say goodbye. But the problem is we in the 3D don't feel it because we instantly feel pain and loss and suffering when we lose somebody we love. So it blocks us from feeling their goodbye. Now, when we get the closure and we get to say goodbye and the ones that are surrounded by family, those are the ones that have like the higher frequency. Because when people pass, they take whatever energy is around them. That gives them a vibration of what they take with them when they pass over. That's why um, a real just personal pet peeve of mine, you will not curse the dead in front of me. You will. (laughs) I don't care how mean they were of a whatever family member or friend we just went through this yeah yeah you do not curse the dead like I I'll, I will admit I have a sister out there I haven't spoken to because she would not stop bashing my dad after he passed and I was like we're done I can't do it yeah you can call me when you you can call me when you can be a decent human being yeah. otherwise we're good and it's just it is what it is so that frequency goes with them so when you feel like you didn't get to say goodbye or there's that fear that's there's that regret. I've seen a lot of people take regret with them because maybe they had a chance to go say goodbye, but they're like, oh, I'll just wait and go to the hospital tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Don't carry that with you. Cause first of all, any low vibration you carry is going to turn into illness if you don't let it go. Secondly, sit in your space and talk to them. They will hear you. I promise. It Absolutely. doesn't matter how crazy it sounds. Sit in your space go where you used to hang out. If it's, if you're, if you're connected to them in that way, if you have like a special spot and talk to them, let them know you love them, let them know you want to say goodbye, ask them to look out for you, let them know you want to hear from them and just have like a full blown open conversation. They will hear it and they will come through and you will feel them. So yeah. don't feel like because you didn't get to say goodbye, that there's something bad or negative with you or something missing or that they're mad. They don't, they don't sit in heaven or up in the spirit realms and go, <sighs> you couldn't get on a plane really (laughs) yeah (laughs) they don't and they're not cursing you yeah and they're not cursing you either because a lot of people have said that they're like oh I'm like listen you're not cursed they're not haunting you do you know what I mean because exactly like you said they're not even they don't once you pass out of this dimension all of that ego that we hold on to here is like gone you know what I mean and holding on like you said even uh so one of the first examples I had was my Theo Fidel and he was in a hospice. He was getting ready to die. He had a cancer and you know, they were like, this is it. So him and I had this like singing relationship and we always sang together and he taught me how to perform. And that night I was like, I was telling my cousin, I was like, I wish I could, she was like, you should sing, you should sing to him. And I'm like, but the hospice was a home and there were two or three other people in there dying you know what I mean and I was like getting ready to cross and I didn't want to be there singing and making all this noise and she was like you should sing to him so the next night I went and I was singing tu solo tu which is a mariachi song that him and I used to sing together and I was singing it really quietly and he hadn't opened his eyes all day so it's a song in Spanish so I sang it nothing didn't open his eyes nothing he was a very religious man so I was like all right I heard sing amazing grace he wants amazing grace. I was like, okay. So I started singing amazing grace and I only know like the main, you know, the main right, first, yeah, verse, the beginning. first, second verse, same as the first. <laughs> you know I mean? like, see, that's it. So, 
you want me to sing Amazing Grace? You're going to do the same chapter, same verse over and over. But so I sang Amazing Grace and it was crazy because he had these, he's from the Mexican side and he had these crystal blue eyes that I just, I remember growing up and being like, why, why didn't we get that gene? Like why? You know what I mean? Because he had these beautiful blue eyes. And it was so crazy because I started singing Amazing Grace and one eye, just one eye popped open and I got to see those beautiful blue eyes one last time his eye closed and he passed like literally I sang him to heaven but even when you That's think they're amazing. unconscious do you know what I mean he hadn't opened his eyes all day and yeah. then it was like he heard that amazing grace and he was like that's it that's how I want to leave that yes, yeah with music and with that, do you know what I mean? Because Tu Solo Tu is mm-hmm. like a love song. So it was kind of like, right. even though it was a love song, it was something that we had sang together. So the amazing grace, when he opened his eyes and then he crossed, I was just like, oh, and I just got chills. He just stepped in. Hello, Theo. Yeah. But yeah, Hello. you know what I mean? But yeah. So that was like one of these first experiences that I had that was just like amazing. So like you said, people, if you don't, if you feel like you didn't get to say goodbye, like, please um, take it from us. And Chanel's going to give you some amazing stories that she's got with some of her clients. Like, and that was just a, a personal example that I have, but they do hear you. They absolutely hear you. And when they cross that other dimension, they can hear you. You know, Trey, like I said, he would always around August, he brings like the end of July, beginning of August, something that I've lost it's always found that first week and it cracks me up because now it's been like 10 years and I'm like, Oh, I wonder what, I, I wonder what I lost is going to be refound this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't realize this because I don't realize this loss until I'm like, Oh my God, yeah, I lost like a while ago. Like, Oh, I'm glad yeah. it turned up. So now it's become like this thing. Like every year I'm like, Oh, I'm going to get something that I lost. That's great. That's, you know, what is it? So that, and then just, I got another story about, um, a key that I had lost, but I'm going to, I want to pass it to you first to give that. So, cause I think people really want to hear like the mediumship stuff guys too. I'm definitely opening up because it's so when you do Reiki and when you do tarot card readings or all card readings, like I do, they come through. Do you know what I mean? They're there and I hear them and I talk to them, but the difference between that and mediumship is you know, Chanel's actually saying to the person like, Hey, so-and-so, can you please come forth and da, 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 da. And so that is something that I'm aspiring to get to and definitely there, because like I said, the, the messages are there, but, uh, when you hear some of the stories that she says about like talking to the people on the other side and connecting them, like, I just can't not hold that back anymore. Cause I'm like, ah, cause the messages (laughs) that come through, with Reiki are so beautiful. Do you know what I mean? And the last session I just had, Jean Twining. Oh, she had nice. won, She won a session off Facebook and I just had her session. And right at the end of her root chakra, her dad came forward and I heard, Papa, Papa. So what I did, you know, and I try to explain to people like we're, you know, I hate the word psychic, but J-Lo had explained it to me how it was like puzzle pieces and I was like now I get it now because that's it's puzzle pieces and we see things and we hear things and that's why we're always asking does this resonate can you validate this because it's like these puzzle pieces we're trying to put together and they're the ones that know what the puzzle piece what the whole picture looks like we're just seeing the puzzle pieces they know what the whole picture looks like right so I was saying it's crazy um how J-Lo was like yeah you see this that and then now I forgot what my whole point was (laughs) That is so fucking awesome. (laughs) Too many sessions today. (laughs) I swear. Oh, oh, the papa. There we go. Thank you. Yes. Too literally too many sessions. We both just had sessions and like came right onto the Zoom. (laughs) Like it was like out of a session onto a Zoom. Yes. Thank you. That's exactly going back to the session. That's exactly what it was. Blame it on work. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Reiki brain. This is Reiki brain. So it was, so all I heard was Papa, right? So like I said, it was a piece, but I didn't, it, it, that was it. So I wrote Papa with a question mark. So I asked, I said, did you call him Papa? Because most people say dad, daddy. And she was like, I called him Papa. I said, thank you. That, okay. So that was him validating. He gave me something to, to give to her that would be like, yes that was him that came through and that was like and I couldn't wait to tell you that because it was like oh there it is you know what I yeah mean? Cause totally because you know, I told the universe all right okay all right guys fine okay you can come forward okay I'm cool you know what I mean and it's like boom there it was 
in that Reiki session. So I was like, that was awesome. That but is tell, amazing. So tell me a story about somebody who didn't get to say goodbye and you were able to like connect with that person on the other side and, you know, bring them that peace. Oh gosh. Um, so the one I can think of, this is a tearjerker. <laughs> you know, Ready? I'm always crying. I cry every podcast. Go so, get a Kleenex. Yeah. Go get a Kleenex. Yeah. So the reading was with a woman who was in her 20s and she lost her mom and her brother in a car accident. Mm -hmm. um, and her brother was a baby and she was 10, I think, 10 or 11. And her baby, or excuse me, her brother was like two or three. And she was one of those people that had trauma on the throat chakra. Like her session originally was a medical medium session because she had thyroid issues. She had really bad neck pain. She had TMJ. Um, what was it? The thyroid issues were creating other like hormonal issues and stuff. Um, she at one point had um, esophageal something where her esophagus muscle tightens up. Um, basically it was all trauma. And I was like, did your mom pass? Like your mom is on your throat and I'm, but it doesn't feel like toxic energy. It's like love, but your voice, everything's so suppressed. And she's like, I knew she would come through. And so she told me the story and she's like, I want my mom. I want, I need something that validates that my mom is here because I want to know that she hears me saying goodbye. Like, even though, yeah, it's been 15 years. I want her to know that I would, I would have said goodbye because I guess they got to the scene of the accident when the mom was still in the car, but she was, little so they were like go sit on the curb like that whole which now after uh, me doing what I do that is the worst thing you could do to a kid they go tell them to sit on the curb and wait and they keep them away and it really messes them up and this girl had a lot of trauma um in the throat totally like she wasn't like um PTSD and dealing with addiction or anything like that she was a great person and stuff but she just had all sorts of illness in her throat and couldn't figure out where it came from well it was the accident um so her mom came through That's so awesome. <laughs> and it was so beautiful. Cause I'm like, okay. I'm like, the car was red. Mom was in the back seat. She's like, yes. And yes, I go, okay. And I'm like, I'm not understanding this, but she's like laying over something like the seat belts on them. And that was the validation she needed because the way they found the mom, it like vibrated through the whole scene of the accident and just put everybody like in like a standstill the mom unbuckled herself and covered her baby and was like fully wrapped around her baby brother when they passed uh, and he showed me I could see it I could see it like I was watching a movie and I said she's wrapped around something like she's laying on her side on the car but it's like she's holding something I can't tell what this is and she's like, that was my brother. They found her holding my brother. Like she unbuckled him and like brought him in to like keep him from like to restrain him. But they both passed. So yes. the woman, needless to say, was like bawling. And she's like, yes. that's validation. And I'm like, and so of course, after the session, I connect with the mother and I say, thank you for showing me that you just brought so, you know, so much peace now to her daughter. Mm -hmm. So I was like, bringing that peace and that comfort to her and that closure because now she'll sleep at night. Cause that was the other yeah. thing she slept at night. She always had this like panic issue at night. She couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And I'm like, I started the day of your accident. You didn't sleep that night. And then your body just was in a shock mode. Cause people don't realize when we go through something traumatic, when we react, that instantly starts conditioning us into a new behavior to yeah. adapt to trauma. Cause we're, we adapt. That's it's a biological fact. So people don't understand that even if they had a trauma 50 years ago, they might still be conditioned into behavior of how they reacted to that trauma. So mm -hmm. that night of that accident, you know, she's a kid. She just lost her mom and brother all in one day. She didn't sleep that night. So it conditioned her into not being able to sleep at all. So yes. the other thing came through. So when her mom showed me that it was just such beautiful validation that she was present with her daughter and letting her know that she saw her. Cause I didn't know anything about it. You know, I just was like, she's in the car and she's so, but apparently when they, when they, opened up the car and were able to get in there to see the mom hugging the baby. It was like, it like went through the whole city, like how, how beautiful it was Yeah, um, that she did what she did to protect her kid. Cause they were hit so fast that uh, was how fast she unbuckled and put herself around her son. That's what I was going to ask. Like, did she see <laughs> that coming? Because how did she even, yeah. 
the yeah, fact that she did that so quickly. Yeah. So it was, it was amazing. <laughs> That's so, so crazy. Now you're making, now I'm remembering this other Reiki session I had. The difference was though, when I started the reading, it was a reading. It wasn't a Reiki session. Um, I saw a car accident but I didn't see the parents clearly. Right. So I just saw a car. So I asked, I was like, did your parents die in a car accident? She was like, yes. And then I heard drunk driver. So I was like, was he, was it a drunk driver? And she was like, yes. And I was like, okay. So that's why I was like, when I say things come through, but I didn't see like the parents, like I couldn't, and I didn't say like, Hey, give me something to give them. But what was awesome was after that reading, ah, this was the best part. Love two it. bunnies, two bunnies in my front yard. I was walking out the door and I said to her, I was like, oh my God, your parents just showed up here at the end of the reading. Like it was oh, like, that's so mean. absolutely. Cause as soon as I looked, I was, they were like, oh, tell her we said bye. So I was like, that was fucking cool. You know yeah, what I mean? For real. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh shit. I was like, look at the buddies. But yeah, that's, that's the part that it's like so beautiful. Yeah. I think it was a lot amazing. of a lot of people are scared and guys, you don't have to be scared. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times when I started tarot reading, they're like, Oh, I'm scared about which I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know. Like that's mm -hmm. first of all, you know what I mean? And then the energy and it's just, if you guys are feeling like Chanel said, right, this, this last client throat pain, like all this stuff going on and you don't even realize it was from like this trauma yeah, like, yeah, you know, you suffered trauma, like, yeah, my mom died, or this and that and the third, but you don't realize what chakras like really get imbalanced and fucked up from that. And then mm -hmm. here comes all the physical stuff, you know, so if this is something that you've been trying, like, if you want to talk to somebody from the other side, and you're like, oh, is this legit or not? Like, first of all, if you are already a skeptic, don't bother calling us. Don't call her. Don't waste her time. <laughs> don't call mm -hmm. me. Like, if you're a skeptic, I'm telling you right now. The, the the second you call one of us to try to try to test us to validate us we'll be told that that's why i love when people are like how can how can people never like when they're challenged how come they don't take it because we already know your intention yeah I'm not, exactly. we're not a pony show we're not mm -hmm. here to this isn't like magic tricks that we're pulling out of our hats like if you want to go see a magic show go see a magician mm -hmm. this is like love and light and healing and true true messages coming through from loved ones you know what I mean so if you're already a skeptic then don't but if you are someone who's been hurting and you're like I didn't get to say goodbye or you know you're wondering like you're talking to these people and can they hear you yeah yeah they absolutely can hear you you know what I mean so don't be scared to like go out and reach a medium or talk to somebody or like Chanel is a medical, a medical medium. Do you know what I mean? So if you're feeling like, you know, her and I can both say this, but fibromyalgia, things like that, guys, the reason why the doctors can't find it, it's because it's an energy thing. It's like trauma that you're holding on to. And usually, I mean, I don't know if I'm making this up, but the fibromyalgia and things like that are like severe trauma. I feel like, I mean, you yeah, like I that, have a you know? I have a video on my TikTok fibromyalgia. Now, there's there's been a couple comments of people that are like, "Oh, I had a great childhood. I love my life," but they didn't mention that they had a really bad traumatic car accident. Or, and also, I'll give two examples. One is going to be my dad, and then all the other clients that I've dealt with that had trauma. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I I truly believe most autoimmune diseases, and I'm even throwing cancer in there. That's my personal opinion. Is trauma related? I've never yeah. met somebody cancer that did not have trauma, especially ovarian and uterine cancer. It, every time it connects to sexual abuse or some type of sexual manipulation or rape, all those things, fibromyalgia. Um, so I'm going to give the energy side of things for someone that grew up with abuse, the TikTok video I have that explains what I see. Um, that's where people have kind of validated it, but these are the people from so far from most of the clients I have were born into abuse. They had parents that were in addicts. They never had stability in the home. They bounced around. And then what happened is they were conditioned with toxic behaviors. And that's all they knew was toxic energy. So when they left the home, they went into a toxic relationship. But mm. in that toxic relationship, they were in the search of love because they never received it in the home. So they go to a narcissistic, toxic person and they look for them for love. What ends up happening is they get it manipulated, they get abused, and they go through all these situations. 
And it's not until later in life that they start to realize like, this isn't making sense. Like every, you know, and they start putting every, all the pieces together. And those people also usually become uh, trauma nurses. They become social workers, counselors, therapists. That's their profession because all they know is trauma because they've lived it because it ripples out of their childhood. Like they leave the child at home and then they go into a toxic relationship and then another toxic relationship. And then what also sometimes will happen is they'll go into a toxic career. Like I have another TikTok that if you look at the behaviors in your home, and I'm as an example of it, behaviors in your home of whoever raised you, whether it's parents or babysitters or whatever, you most likely chose a career that matches their behaviors. And for <laughs> myself, my whole childhood, my dad was obsessed with money. It was all about money. Now I wanted to be a sign language interpreter and uh, do the whole travel the world and be a sign language interpreter. But that was like, that career is really difficult to get your foot in the door. It's like, it's like wanting to be a famous actor. It's like one in a million. Um, so I, anyway, I ended up becoming a banker. <laughs> so it yeah. like made sense because I was around money all the time. My, not around money, but like the energy of money, negative energy. Like my dad was always chasing money and wanting money. So I, you know, your energy shifts, but with fibromyalgia, they, you know, I'll go back to that. They only know trauma. So they, get into a career that's trauma related. And then what ends up happening is because they're constantly, now I'm going to go into the physical side. They're constantly like their energy. When I look at them as a medical medium, they look like they're being tased. It's like, zzz, zzz. Mm. And the system I'm seeing where they're like clenching because they're constantly, they're in like a go mode and they, they're always like on alert. So they clench and their nervous system is like seizing well, when you're doing that, it puts your body in panic mode, which eventually manifests acid, which is pain. And so then they start feeling pain all over their body in random spots. And then they have inflammation in the joints and they're, they just suddenly start feeling pain everywhere. And it's, it's very debilitating for some. And that's why, and they also are usually the people that were sexually abused or abused, verbally abused. And they just have like their spine. When I look at it, like on the medical medium side of things, blocks all up and down the spine from trauma and they all connect to something in childhood and as you move up the spine not looking at the chakras just looking at the spine and the trauma it's like the higher up you go in the spine the older they were in life when they experienced that trauma ah. so yeah a little bit different so it's just it's crazy to see that with the fibromyalgia but those are the ones that so far I mean there's very few that haven't now my dad is one that had fibromyalgia but he didn't get it until he was 60 because he was almost beat to death when he was 55. And someone came into his house and beat him with a baseball bat and he almost died. And he ended up for probably 10 years, like he'd be sitting there watching TV and he'd go, ah, and he'd get like a sharp pain in his arm where the guy beat him and his body would react as if he'd been hit. And he was like, God dang, I just felt like I got hit. Like, what was, oh my God. Or he'd be like, oh man, I got the worst headache right now. Like the headache would just come out of nowhere because his body was still responding as if he was being beaten. And it wouldn't happen like all at one time, but it'd be like his arm would start hurting real bad. And he'd be like, damn, I, he's like, oh me damn, that's where that guy hit me. Holy crap. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. And that's when I was like, oh my God. I mean, this was a long time ago. I wasn't a medical medium yet. Like I was just yeah. kids, but I was like, that actually makes sense. Like, holy crap. And it was like 10 years, he would experience random pain throughout his body. And they were like, you know, it's, it's got to be fibromyalgia, which at that time, nobody knew what the heck it was. Now, my dad did also have a lot of childhood trauma, but I feel like it was the beating that brought all that trauma into his body because it was like the emotional beating that he got in childhood now matched with the physical beating he got from that guy. And then not even six months later, he was having fibromyalgia symptoms. Yeah. Well, I totally agree with you like a thousand times infinity that the disease of whether like it's fibromyalgia or cancer or anything comes from the trauma. And that's why like, even with my addiction and alcoholism, I've said to people and I just posted a TikTok about it. And I was like, and I know, you know, it might piss some and whoever listens to people who are in the program or NA or AA, you know, that program helped me yes in the beginning it absolutely did but i'm going to say this because i'm going to say this this is my truth thousands upon thousands of people relapse even in aa even in rehab how many people have you heard have gone to rehab multiple our our little friend our little friend who we had to let go um chanel and i had been working with and it was a a, a 
somebody I had met in rehab, Chanel attuned us both to Reiki. I went down one path, that girl went completely back down the other, right? No judgment, but that she was in rehab. She had been to AA. Why did I stay sober? And why did she not? Reiki, energy, chakras. After my one year of sobriety, I don't even go to AA meetings anymore. After COVID, I couldn't. My employees, everybody knows retail, there's no employee. I literally couldn't go the way that I used to. Had I not had Reiki in my life, who knows? I probably would have relapsed like everybody else. So many people either became alcoholics or completely relapsed during COVID because they didn't have those meetings. They didn't have yeah. those. I, I felt, so I will never forget when they shut down the AA meetings. I was like, oh, good God, so many people are going to die. There are so mm -hmm. many people that are going to die because a lot of people, instead of dealing with that trauma, AA to me is a Band-Aid. AA mm -hmm. is another band-aid. I can go to all the fucking meetings I want all day, every day. I can go to rehab one, two, three, five times. But until I heal that trauma, that root cause of why I was drinking, I would not, I would not be sober today if it weren't for that. Mm -hmm. And then what? Liver disease? Kid I had kidney stones. Mm -hmm. Sacral chakra because of my addictions and all that kidney stones. Mm -hmm. My wedding... I was a hot mess. I was, it, and ironically, I was never a pill popper. Of all the drugs and choices, I was never a pill popper. I was on Xanax during my wedding because I had a stent in my kidney because they wouldn't remove the kidney stones before my wedding. Mm -hmm. And so they put this stent in. And I was like, isn't this, isn't this ironic, Alanis Morissette? Wouldn't you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, here I am on my wedding day trying to enjoy it. And I'm like having to take these pain meds, like for real, for real. You know what I mean? I was so out of it, but that's, it all comes from that. And we kind of went off sideways with the mediumship, but it's literally all tied together guys. You know, like I said, when people are ill and the whole energy. So that's why he said it's all energy. So even when people die, you think that energy just dies? The, like make that make sense. It doesn't like, and you know, when people are like, I saw a cardinal or I saw, you know, three little birds or I saw a quarter or I saw a dime. Those people believe, and I promise you, they are getting messages from their loved ones. Mm -hmm. it, it, you literally just have to ask. And I promise they will like Trey hasn't come to me in a dream. And I've asked him, Hey, what's up? Like, how come I don't see you in a dream? And it still hasn't happened. But like I said, mm -hmm. others, other things have been there. So don't right. be disappointed in that either. Like just keep an open mind, believe in the magic and it's stuff. You will see it. You know what I mean? You'll definitely see it. Yeah. And it's one of those things too, where people like I had a, this is one of the things people need to understand is, you know, if you don't believe in stuff, that's fine. Nothing will come through, but that doesn't mean they're not there. There's, they're giving you signs. However, with a medium session, I can feel it. If you don't believe in it, it's the first thing that comes through. And, um, I'll just say right now while we're talking about it, do not go to a medium over a trust and estate issue where you want to find out why you didn't get money or why you weren't in the will. If you're one of those greedy people that you truly want to try to abuse the talent and skill set of mediumship to find out why you didn't get money, there's issues there with, with that person. <laughs> and I like, can't even stress enough how much damage you're doing to your connection to the loved one. Um, I had and to yourself and to yourself. Yeah. That yeah. greedy energy you're putting out there, good luck. Mm -hmm. For real. And I had a girl come to me. Um, <laughs> I'll never forget this. The energy came through of the mother, all loving, all love. And I, I, this is the fastest I've seen an energy just back, just go away. It was like it was severed. Um, I and I felt it, and right away her mom showed me a couple Christmas ornaments. One was like a glass; it looked like a dove, and I'm like, okay, she's showing me some Christmas ornaments. And I mean, this didn't really resonate because this is like in July, but it turned out it was her baby one, like her first baby Christmas ornament. And the girl goes, "Yeah, mm -hmm. whatever." And okay, you know, I do all my stuff in Messenger so they can keep their reading. She says, "Well, whatever. That's not what I'm here for. You need to ask her why. What? Why I didn't get any money." <laughs> And I was like, hang on a second. And I, just as I like, I wasn't going to connect with the mom and say, why didn't she get money? I was going to like say, hey, we need to reset. So I'm typing like, do you mean like you want me to in spirit ask her why? Like, are we talking will and trust? Because I like couldn't believe it. 
And so I go, are, are we talking about like a will and a state? You're wanting money. And she's like, yes, absolutely. That's what I want. And I said, well, then our session's done because that's not what I do. Um, there's too many negative energies attached to that. I said, you know, it's one thing if like there's an issue and something was lost and you're devastated and, you know, I've, I've helped with that kind of stuff because it was a sincere, genuine, like, like one of this, one of the situations there was, it was the neatest thing, two brothers and a sister, they didn't know how to divide the money because they didn't want to make anybody mad. So they were like, does mom want, want so-and-so to have the house or so that kind of thing. I was like, right. oh, that. but this chick was like, where's my money? And I was like, we're done. And she's like, well, you need to at least ask for why my sister got the business and why did my sister get this? And why did my sister get that? And I was just like, you, the hate came through so hard. And I was like, I just, I'm, I already refunded your money to PayPal. I appreciate your time. Like we're done. I didn't even let yeah. her finish. I refunded her money and just sent her on her way because it just, when you're skilled in mediumship and you have a sincere, genuine, um, I guess, overall goal of making that connection and bringing that closure, whatever it is that person needs, when something like that comes through, we feel it. And I'll mm -hmm. never forget because before the session even started, I was like, everything feels icky. Why does this feel icky? And I was like, kind of waiting, like, this just feels crappy, like shitty, low vibe energy. What's going on? And when she was like, ask her where my money is. I was like, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. I have to say though, one of the coolest things about what we do, I had, I had a private party, another tarot reading, and there was like five or six women and I was totally fine. Then like an hour before the reading right here on my neck just got so tight and I was like, oh, who is this? And that's what fascinates me. It's like, I know, like, right away, I'm like, this isn't mine. Like, what is this? And then lo and behold, one of the ladies that I, it was like the second lady that ended up coming in. And I was like, ah, this is you. I'm like, this is sure. just what her, what she was going through. And it was just uh, all tight and it built up here. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, you, you're the one that's causing all this. <laughs> you know what I mean? But For real, so yeah crazy how we can like feel those physical things and I love also guys find a, find people who have integrity too because that's the one thing like I love how Chanel's like no I gave you your money back I've I've cut clients off too if you misunderstand or if they think we do something more than what we do it's like no I'm sorry do you know what I mean no ethical um reader or medium anybody who has integrity will ever message you either so please 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 if you're listening to this if you ever get a pm somebody soliciting you so i have pm people when they've won a contest hey you won this reading da, 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 da. i will never pm you and say oh your energy felt so good to me do you want a reading absolutely red flag all day every day if any healer medium, psychic, whatever they want to call themselves, dips into your your inbox talking about, do you want a reading? They are not legit, okay? Their integrity is to try to take advantage of you. Do you know what I mean? Because there are, because I'm not saying that they're not legit. And that's the scary part, right? That they probably are talent. They have this gift and they prey upon people. So just like with the church, there's good and bad. And like with spirit, with every facet of anything, you're going to have dark and light. You're going to have dark and light. So just please take it from us though. Do not respond to anybody that PMs you unless you've already had an established like, okay, I'm going to PM you to schedule this reading or I'm going to PM you because you won this reading. Um, right. Just don't, just run away as fast as you can. So, you know, I'm going to put her links again, obviously Chanel's links. I'm going to try to link that TikTok too, the fibromyalgia one that you have. So mm -hmm. people can yeah, see that it's, too. It's like four videos now. I can send it to you if you want. Yeah, the send link. it to me. And then this way, yeah. yeah. So this way I can send that, put that link in there also so that you guys can watch it. Yeah. And um, again, you can follow both of our TikToks that we post a lot about healing, um, mediumship readings. You know, Chanel has great, it's so awesome because she, people will ask specific questions and she puts her answers on there as well. Like, Hey, I have this, I have that like different physical pains, which is amazing. So, mm -hmm. um, definitely follow those links and guys, if there is 
someone on the other side that you've been wanting to talk to, like, I'm going to save my trade story for another day because it was pretty cool. It was a, a, my car key. My yeah, because I was waiting to hear that. You should share it. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> I, well, it was like, yeah, I was like, we got time. So it was a, you know, it was such a cool <laughs> story because I lived in L.A. He had my spare key. And when he had died, my spare key was in his car. So I got that back. I moved. To, I was flying back and forth from Pittsburgh. So my friend in LA was in charge of starting my car because I'd be gone for six weeks, eight weeks. I'd be like, just start my car just so it doesn't die. So after this last trip, I had gotten taught proposed. So I was like, okay, I'm getting married. So I should probably move to Pittsburgh. I can't keep doing this flying back and forth. So I finally decided to bring my car back. The spare key was lost. I freaked out on my friend because the value of the car goes down. I'm like, all you had to do was start my car. Why did you even touch the spare key? Like, why? Why did you even touch the spare key? Like, for what reason? And he was like, I don't, I didn't do it. I don't know. And I was like, oh, whatever. You're a hot mess. Yes, you did. I totally blamed him. Car gets transferred to Pittsburgh. My mom is living in New York. There's a shoe rack. The shoe rack went from New York City to Monroeville, Pennsylvania, to Green Tree, Pennsylvania, to my current residence where I reside now. So fast forward, my husband and I are married. I have these plants up on this shoe rack that came from New York. This is part of the story. So the shoe rack comes from New York that ends up in Pittsburgh. So me and the shoe rack end up in Green Tree, PA. Because I've been living in Monroeville. So that's how the shoe rack went from New York to Monroeville to Green Tree. See, this is why I don't tell post two stories. I go off on too many tangents. So anyway, if you're still listening, <laughs> so the shoe rack, right? Shoe rack is now in Green Tree. Todd, my husband, is watering these plants that are on this shoe rack and it's upstairs. I don't go upstairs. I was working from 10 to 9 every day. I was tired as hell. He's watering these plants. Well, I come home one day. It was a Thursday. I'll never fucking forget it. And he's like, hey, I found your spare key. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, the spare key to your Yaris, your Toyota. And I was like, no, you didn't. I left. I lost that in California. So I'm eating. He goes and grabs the key. He comes downstairs. He's like, isn't this the key? When I tell you, when I tell you the chills that went through my fucking body, because that was one of the anniversaries that was the first gift that was given that was the oh, first I was one ask, what was the key like why did he why did he what was going on around that with the key? that was his anniversary and yes wow and, that, and it, so it's so it was crazy because it was probably like the third year third or fourth year that he had passed but it was the first year that that car had come to pittsburgh right because i'd been flying back and forth for that first year it was oh god i can't remember maybe it was the second anniversary anyway it was after his death right so he comes down, he's like, isn't this the key? And I was like, there's no fucking way. I was like, there's no fucking way. I called my friend instantly. I said, didn't we lose that key? Please tell me I'm not crazy. Please, please confirm for me that we never found that spare key. And he goes, no, we didn't. And I think that you actually owe me an apology because he had been trying to drink his wine. And I was like, I want to smack that glass of wine. You better help me find this key. And maybe we were searching the whole oh, apartment wow. that night for that key and we never found it. So that's why I was like, this key just showed up in my house. That's and he's amazing. like, he was like, you owe me an apology. And I started cracking up. I go, that's what you got from this whole thing is I owe you an apology. <laughs> Typical like are you husband, fucking... right? yeah yeah well, no, that, was a, that was my friend in LA it wasn't even that was oh, like, oh, oh I thought it was, that was no, no no that was my friend in LA that I was like you better help me find my key and he was like you I, I think you owe me an apology so it was so fucking funny oh, so that is so cool though but that key guys that's why I said there was things like that have happened <laughs> to me because I I believe <laughs> I totally right. believe and Trey made it so that there would be no doubt okay first of all my husband is a skeptic and he, even he said okay okay I can't deny this shit he had been watering those plants for months months and I asked him where was it he said the key was sitting so here's the if the pot the pot of the it was sitting right there right in the pot like you could not miss it he said it was just wow. he goes that key was not there the last couple months that I've been watering these plants so Trey made sure that it was somebody else mm -hmm. he made sure a skeptic found that key yeah a lot Not of only that amazing something that was without a doubt had been lost mm -hmm. without a doubt that key had been lost in California how did that key that spare key end up on a shoe rack that had been in New York City now in this house in Pennsylvania yeah a year later in a plant that you own when you lost the key. Like, that's insane. 
like come on guys that's you know amazing. what I mean and that's why I said like shit like that is it's so amazing and, and like I said I've always I've always known talk to spirits and you know so if you're a skeptic fine we're not here to change your mind but if you're someone who has lost someone who is scared that they don't hear you or who has been wanting a sign but you're too scared to ask because you don't think that it's going to happen or you know you like like Chanel said you, you that loss you know that trauma or any kind of like that if, the, if any of you listening have been through anything like that talk to them because they can't hear you and if mm -hmm. you want somebody else then call Chanel do you know what I mean in a few months you can call me too <laughs> yeah. let's, talk, right. yeah, let's connect let's talk to them let's let's have these messages come through because they do and they will come through but like Chanel said you can't fake the fuck with energy either we're gonna know you're a shitty person or they know that you're coming with shitty intentions and they like she said that mom dipped right out mm -hmm. oh, you want to be and, greedy but she vanished like it was gone but what was so cool is she came through later and I kept hearing Leslie Leslie, Leslie. And I'm like, today I've had someone follow. Okay. I got it. So today my day has been like, I'm going to make a TikTok. Someone's okay. grandmother has been following me going, tell them to use confectioner sugar, not powdered sugar. Confectioner <laughs> sugar is the better sugar. And I'm over here going, I don't have any more questions today. <laughs> oh yeah. But anyway, they, um, I lost my train of thought on that one, but yeah, they do. They come through. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Something different. Um, even if you set up an intention, like you want to sign, like, let's say you're like, leave me a feather or leave yeah. me be open to other signs because sometimes they'll give you signs to help you connect with something you're struggling with. So like, let's say you say yes. a feather, but then like you're folding laundry in the dryer and then you see a dime and you all must have thrown it. That dime and might be them saying you're gonna be okay. We'll we'll help you find money. Like they're letting you know, like maybe you were struggling financially with money. So instead of leaving you a feather, they left you a dime to let you know that financially you're gonna be okay. Like it's a season. So a lot of times they'll sometimes leave you a sign that's different because they want to give you a message to let you know that you're gonna be okay or that they're with you. So don't feel like you have to box yourself into one thing. Be open to seeing things randomly placed that you normally wouldn't see where they yeah. belong. Or like a heart shaped leaf or like one day yes. I was and I saw a stone. It was like in the asphalt. It was a heart shape and it was on the day of my dad's birthday. So I knew it was my dad. You know yeah. what I mean? So just keep your mind open as far as like science and things like that. Yes. And then also what you're thinking, like, like you said, like if you see it, like if you're like, oh, you know, you're super stressed about something or you're thinking about something and then all of a sudden you see that dime, you know, and that's them mm -hmm. letting you know, yeah. like you know, cause that, that always, I love that when I'm like going through something and they're like, boop. And I'm like, there it is. Yeah. You know, totally. So pennies and dimes guys are from heaven. So if you get pennies and dimes, that's your loved ones and just believe in the magic truly. Cause you'll see it and they are there and we can validate and you don't have to believe us, but I'm telling you it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't have to believe me. you don't have to believe us, <laughs> but it's true. I'm just telling you it's true. With no ego, yeah. I'm telling you it's true. Yeah. So thank you, Chanel. You're so awesome. I love doing these with you. I love it, love it, love it. Good love time. It. Good time. Yeah. And guys, we're bringing Nick Salzman back on. So our next podcast, um, hopefully, if we could get, you know, Chanel and Nick's schedule yeah. together. Um, everybody loved when he was on. There was such a high amount Nick, of views. That, yeah. Yeah, and then maybe the paranormal guys too. We can get back on here because uh, John and Matt they love them too. That was a really great podcast. The paranormal, um, the paranormal researchers. So, yeah, yeah. guys. Um, and then email us. Let us know what you want. You know, please email us. I said I'll put the email link on this one, but it's all walks of light at gmail .com. All walks of light podcast at gmail .com. Super super easy. Be like, hey, what's this? Or I've had this. Let's give us some stuff and let us you know answer your questions here. So. Please email, write us in, let us know your comments, questions. Yeah, you know what, actually, let's open that. Send emails of questions and answers and we'll do a question and answer night. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So questions <laughs> like, will my job work out? You know, why am I feeling this? Da, 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 da. Answer questions and we'll totally do an, a whole episode of just answering questions that we get through the email. So we'd yeah, love to do cool. that. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll put that in the um in the link too and I should have been doing that anyway. So... <laughs> It's all right. Email. I know, right? <laughs> We're growing and glowing. So yeah. 
So guys, please email us. Let us know if you have any questions or any questions about podcasts that we've had so far. And um, we will be back and we'll see you soon. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night, you guys. Bye. Bye.